This is the Breakfast Leadership Podcast. Boundaries or burnout, you make the choice. Here's your host, Michael Levitt. Welcome back. I have Dr. Allison Tothi on the line. Hey, Allison, how are you? Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. Thanks. I am great. We met back in April, I believe, of 2019 at the Becker's Conference, and we were both on a panel talking about physician burnout. And when I talk to people that's outside of the healthcare sector, and I mention physician burnout, at first they look at me like I have three heads, and they're saying, what do you mean physicians are burned out? And of course, me working in, in the sector and you being you know, a very, very busy physician, um, you, you see it you know, with your colleagues and you may have seen it within yourself as well. So uh, tell us a little bit about your backstory and, and some of the things um, that you're seeing when, when it comes to physician burnout. Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, well, my backstory is I, I'm a pediatric emergency physician. I practice on the south side of Chicago uh, in a level one uh, trauma, level one pediatric emergency department. Um, very underserved, uh, deserving, amazing population of children that I take care of. Um, but the you know, acuity is high and the complications are often, and um, there's a ton of stress clinically on all of my colleagues. Um, and apart from that, I have done a variety of different hospital administrative, uh, I've had a variety of different hospital administrative roles uh, in different leadership areas, including patient experience and uh, team engagement. And throughout my career, I've noticed uh, and been aware of the toll that, it, that being a practicing physician takes on uh, on physicians, uh, and it's often slow uh, to build up, but it's this sort of underlying level of, um, for many physicians, of a sense of frustration and compassion fatigue that slowly permeates into the work that they're able to do. Yeah, and I've seen it, especially in the last you know, couple of decades, but you know, probably I would say in the last 10 years for sure, a rapid spike in, in the burnout and, and the stress that physicians are facing because it, it's almost as if it's a perfect storm where you have a lot more compliance that funding bodies, whether it's a government or insurance companies or combination thereof, that are requesting information and stats and reports from physicians, add that onto the health of individuals is getting more complex because of a variety of reasons, diet, lack of exercise, uh, and all kinds of other uh, issues that have come up in the last you know, few decades. It costs into that that now you have electronic health records that no matter how they try to design them, never seem to match up with the flow of how to how a physician practices. And you put all of those things together and you wonder, okay, how in the world can a physician be able to get everything that they need to get done with all of these hurdles that they have to face day after day after day? I, I think it's a combination of everything as well. I think it's this idea of slowly over time, physicians feeling like they're losing their sense of autonomy and decision-making abilities. It's a very complex lift of the electronic medical record that um, uh, in some, and it is the burden of uh, CMS or government mandated requirements um, and then it's also, I think, the self-burden that we put on ourselves as physicians to do the absolute best that we can for our patients. We don't want to let our patients fail or die or get sick or get worse. Um, we want them to be healthy and improve. And so uh, piling on top of all of the regulations and all of the electronic medical record and the lack of autonomy and the 
need to bill, 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 and see more patients and see more patients is this genuine sense of um, why people went into healthcare to begin with, which is I want to make people healthier, I, I care about them, and I want to make them better. And I believe that physicians are at a place where the burden of everything else makes, um, makes it very hard to keep people healthy and to engage with our patients. Yeah, especially with all of those factors and having to bill a lot and see a lot of patients, it automatically shortens you know, the amount of time that you can spend with a patient and talk to them about what's going on in their life. And, and one thing that I know as well, you know, I'm working in primary care for as long as I did, is as a physician, you, like you said, you want to make people healthier, but the patient has to have skin in the game as well. Um, they have to make some adjustments and choices to live healthier and, and actually follow physicians' advice on things. You know, the stats that I've seen on, you know, the number of patients and the percentage that actually pay attention and follow what uh, they're supposed to do um, is so low. And, and we wonder, you know, why people aren't getting any healthier. It's because they're not following, you know, the guidance that the medical professionals are giving them. Yeah, well, so um, it depends, it certainly depends on the patient population and, um, uh, and the people that you work with. Um, uh, and it also depends on, you know, there are a lot of socioeconomic factors depending on access to healthcare and how available the healthcare system is and how easy it is to access and what that care looks like across the board. So um, I, I do believe that um, the, there is, there's a balance of responsibility on both sides. Absolutely. Um, and patients have to take responsibility for their own health and their own actions. But we certainly don't, we, the healthcare system, not just the physicians, but we as the healthcare, the healthcare environment don't make that always as easy for our patients. Yeah, navigating the healthcare system, whether it's with financial constraints or if you have to see a lot of specialists, you know, sometimes that handoff um, from a primary care physician or an ER physician to a specialist um, it can be challenging. Uh, and even for those that work within the system, you know, people that aren't familiar with, with how everything works, it makes it even more complex. And you know, in the area that I'm in, we have a high immigrant population and many of these individuals, you know, from, you know, whatever countries they originally came from didn't have access to healthcare like we do in North America. So in many situations, they're seeing physicians for the first time and they could be in their forties and fifties. So, you know, they don't have any type of immunizations or anything like that. And you have really no idea, you know, what's going on with them. So helping those individuals navigate you know, a new system when they're not even familiar with, you know, what healthcare looks like uh, is definitely a challenging situation for sure. It's challenging, but it can be really rewarding um, uh, for the people involved in the healthcare team. So I think those are incredible opportunities that um, we have um, as caregivers, as physicians, to be able to um, help navigate a person through the healthcare system. And if it's done well and it feels seamless and it doesn't feel like a heavy lift on the physician's side and there's a benefit at the end and you see the progress um, then that's a great opportunity um, when you talk about um, burnout and a sense of purpose of allowing the physician then to step back and say, see what I accomplished, look what I was able to do for this patient. And that self-reward, I think, help, can help ameliorate uh, some of the burnout. Well, that's crucial, too. And again, it, 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 it reinvigorates physicians when they get to you know, work with people, um, that are actually really interested in, in getting better. And it, it's a team effort and it, it brings back, you know, like you said earlier, the, the desire and the reason why you went into this field in the first place. 
it is not an easy choice to be a physician. Uh, it's very timely as far as your commitment, uh, very expensive in order to go through school and everything like that. You know, the hours, the, you know, the constant studying, the various interactions of medications that change almost on a daily basis. You, know, you, you have no idea, you know, how complex it is to, to be a physician. So, I mean, again, you go, all these things can lead up if you're not addressing things properly to a physician that gets tired or disengaged from what they're doing. And as our population continues to get older, we need more physicians, not less. And we need those physicians to be healthy, you know, themselves. You know, we, we, it's not fair for us as you know, consumers of the healthcare system to expect our, our physician professionals to work insane hours uh, when, you know, there, there's a better way around it. Uh, I'll, I'll get off my soapbox now, but uh, it's, 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 it, but, but it is, again, it's just one of those things where, you know, I, I see it, you know, especially with, you know, younger physicians that are entering and, and they're, you know, with tons of student loan debt and all this other stuff. And, you know, they see all the things that they have to do. And, and, you know, I even had a physician mention to me once he, you know, it would be nice to be able to actually spend some time and see patients instead of all this paperwork. And I, I, I kind of nodded and I said, yeah, we, we need to figure this out somehow. And, and I'm not, you know, I'm sure many, and many doctors have some ideas on how we can do it, but you know, for you, you know, what are, what are some of the things that you do uh, as a physician to help, um, help prevent, you know, burnout from creeping up in, in your own life? We'll be back to the show in a moment, but first I want to let you know today's show is brought to you by our wonderful sponsor, CloudHQ. With CloudHQ, you get access to over 20,000 influencers that have been curated by brands just like yours. If you're a brand, you know how difficult it is to find and connect with the influencers that your audience already knows and trusts. That's why I suggest you get CloudHQ. When you sign up today, you get access to over 20,000 influencers on Instagram. You can see loads of data about their profile and engagement rates before you reach out, and you have direct access to their contact information so you can reach out to them on or off the platform. When you reach out to them on the platform, they offer automation tools so you can reach out to a bunch of those influencers at one time. This will save you a lot of time and I guarantee it'll pay for itself in the first year. For Breakfast Leadership listeners, I'm offering a special discount. Normally, an enterprise subscription would go for over $1,500 a year. My friends at CloudHQ are offering a subscription for just $499 a year. That's a savings of over $1,000. You can sign up today by using the discount code BREAKFAST and save, like I said, over $1,000 a year. CloudHQ is a wonderful option for any brands that are looking to influence their marketing and looking to get their program off the ground. So sign up today using the link in our show notes and use the code BREAKFAST and let me know what you think. Like I said, I guarantee it'll pay for itself in its first year. CloudHQ is an amazing offer and it's a good option for anybody that's interested in influencer marketing. Now back to the show. I wanted to go back to um, physicians do have great ideas um, about how to possibly do this. And um I think the solution is so multifactorial, but I absolutely believe that one of the ways that we're going to solve this is to let physicians be at the table when we are helping to solve for things like efficiency and EMR solutions and flow and care for patients. And because um, just like any other problem we want to tackle well, where we make sure we have the right people around the table to solve those problems, um, our physicians are part of the frontline team, and they have uh, a ton of experience and amazing ideas, and um, we have to allow them to be part of the solution. Um, uh, and I think that often gets missed, particularly in busy healthcare systems where um, there are administrators that are running the show to make sure that the hospital works and they're very skilled in some of what they in what they in some of what they do but um, often the physicians are relegated to go take care it feels like often the physicians are relegated to go take care of patients uh, we need you to see patients we need you to generate clinical revenue um, and the, and it feels like administrators administrators are saying we've got the rest 
you just go take care of patients, we've got the rest. And I think there's this disconnect because we are losing this amazing brain trust contribution with our physicians who um, can be at the table and can participate in some of the decisions around solutions to um, burnout. Because in, in my mind, solving for a physician, solving for burnout isn't just on the onus of the physician, and it isn't just on the onus of the employer. It's a combination of both. There are solutions that need to run the gamut from fixing operations, fixing flow, looking at the EMR, all the way through to uh, mental health of our physicians, um, time off from access to a pager, um, uh, time not spent in the evenings on that EMR because you didn't have time to do it during the day, right? So there's this whole gamut um, of, of design that needs to take place that is a balance between what the hospitals or what a practice can be responsible for and what an individual physician needs to work on and needs to be responsible for. Not to mention the underlying finding a sense of purpose, seeing the power and the amazing things that people do each and every day um, uh, that help balance that out as well. You know, with all the meetings that I used to participate in, because I'm based in Ontario, Canada, and I sat on a uh, sat on a lot of government meetings, and it always annoyed me that physicians weren't at the table because we were trying to redesign a system and not having all the players at the table to design it. It's, yeah. it's, and I see it time and time and time again, and it, it annoys me because I'm thinking these are the people that see things that administration and government officials cannot see because they're not there they're not at the table so implementing this well we're going to have you do this and do this without getting any type of input or suggestions um, is it, it that's why things fail and that's why um, they don't get buy-in from the physicians because one it's not going to work for one and two it boils down to if you get the engagement and everyone feels like we are, as cheesy as this sounds, we are a team, a united system on providing health care. Yes, it's important to have administration. Then they can take care of the admin stuff so the physicians can take care of the physician stuff. And yes, there should be understanding of how everything flows. But at the end of the day, have everybody operating where they are best to operate. And when you do that, um, things flow easier, and all of a sudden the patient experience is better. That your 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 scores, as far as any type of stats that the government wants, look better because you're doing things really yeah. well, and it corrects so many things. And it's just a simple thing of all right, let's have a meeting. And oftentimes, too, administrative people like to have meetings at times that doctors are at their most busy. Right. I'm like, um, y yeah. That's not really an invite. You know, that, that's like asking somebody, okay, we're going to ask them over for dinner, but we know they go on their cruise that month, so we're going <laughs> to ask them then. They're not going to come, and they can't because they're serving patients. And it's, yeah, it, it's one of those things where, yeah, if I had hair, I'd pull it out, but I don't, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's, there's a balance to everything. And, but I, am, I do know that you're, you're absolutely right. Um, we are maxing out our ability to provide quality, safe, effective, amazing care. Um, and, and we have room to grow, but we don't have room to grow unless we bring our care teams along for the ride. And that engagement piece is so important if we want to continue to elevate how amazing our care is. Um, and, and I agree. I think you have to find creative solutions and think outside the box about how you're going to get physicians to the table. Um, and, and, and that is tricky. And maybe it's not an in-person meeting or maybe um, there are other ways to gather that information. But feeling a sense of engagement affords buy-in to the physician. And therefore, they want to practice how... They've, desi they've helped design it as opposed to being told how they've, they are going to practice. Yeah. And that's, uh, that always bugs me too, especially if it's, you know, an administration that have 
never you know, taken a single course, much less know how to be a physician to dictate how to be a physician or how a physician should do their job. Um, that concerns me uh, because there's so many, in other roles, in other industries, there's components of that. Uh, but when it comes down to, uh, you know, one of the most important roles on the planet, uh, yeah, administrators, you know, you know, we've, we've heard the phrase, you know, with the gun violence and all of that stuff, which I know you're a huge, huge um, proponent for, you know, gun safety and all of that. And that's, that'll bring you back for another interview on that one because I'm, I'm you and I, you, you, you and I are on the same page with that, but you know, it's like, you know, sometimes administrators need to stay in their own lane. And, um, and I know that was an NRA comment that uh, made me again, want to pull out my hair. <laughs> it's like, uh, no, if, if everybody was uh, playing by the rules, um, our emergency rooms wouldn't be filled with people that are getting shot. But yeah, that's definitely another co interview and another subject on that one. So, so it, I know I, I kind of alluded to this before, but I know that you said because burnout is such a, a complex thing with physicians. But yeah. if there was one thing, a, a common thing that you would you tell other physicians and, and people uh, to do to, you know, to really focus on and preventing having burnout. If there was one thing, one piece of advice you would give them, what would it be? <laughs> well, I'm going to push the, um, I'm going to push all of the sort of hospital piece off to the side, right? Like the operations piece and which I absolutely think is a, 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 a group that, you know, that has to be solved. And I'm going to um, focus a little more on um, uh, the personal piece to it. Um, I, I think that, I think, I think that figuring out a way to see the power in the, of, in the work that you do every day and being very, um, and remembering and being mindful of all those small interactions, by the way, I'm not always very good at this. Um, so it's, I'd like to, pr I try to practice what I preach, but it's, I'm not always this great at it, but it's a work in progress. Um, but uh, seeing those amazing small interactions with your patients that um, make a difference every day has so much power in um, helping you remember why you went into healthcare, why you do what you do, and why it's so important that we continue to do the work we do as physicians. So I think that's my one big piece of advice, except it's not a one size fits all for any, everyone. Um, but I think that this, this piece is doable. We all interact with someone every day and we change a small part of their life. It's not about changing the world everywhere. It's about changing small parts of a world and those hands-on interactions that we have every day are really powerful and we need to practice. We, I need to practice recognizing those and seeing the sense of purpose that I have. That's awesome. And that's incredible advice, not just for healthcare workers and physicians, <laughs> but, but for everybody, you know, it, whatever work you do, you know, it, it impacts a customer or a client or a patient or, or somebody like that. Um, just take a moment and focus on what your labor provides. And uh, if you can reconnect with that, it, it gives you that sense of fulfillment. And I think that's one thing that tends to be missing from a lot of people's lives right now is that feeling of fulfillment, that they're, that they're making a dent in the universe. And, um, and I know for a fact that you're definitely, definitely doing that. So Allison loved our conversation Thank today. You. Um, where, can too, people, where can people find out more about you and the awesome work you're doing at University of Chicago? So, um, yeah, I have a, I have a LinkedIn. You can find me on LinkedIn. It's Allison Tothi MD. And I have a Twitter line that handle that's the same. And um, uh, my contact information can be found through there. I'm also, obviously, I'm at the University of Chicago and you can find me on their website. Awesome. And I'll definitely have that information in the show notes. So, great. Allison, Allison, great to connect with you again. Um, great to see you. Well. Thank you so much. And yeah. We'll, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Take care. Take care. Hey, it's Michael again. Thank you for listening to the podcast. I really appreciate it. 
If you're like many people, you're dealing with some significant stress and possibly approaching burnout. I know how you feel. In 2009, my burnout led to a year of worst case scenarios. I do not want that to happen to you. If you go to breakfastleadership.com, you can register for a free webinar on burnout prevention, as well as get as a free checklist to have successful mornings. Start off each day the right way. Again, that's at breakfastleadership.com. Also, since you are a loyal podcast listener, I'm asking you to like, rate, and review my podcast on iTunes. I look at all the reviews and appreciate your comments, and it helps other potential listeners discover the content I have on the show. I appreciate you, and thanks again for listening.